Hello, everyone, and welcome to another edition of the YPod, where we highlight everyday Wyoming leaders. Very excited today for you to either meet and get to know, or if you've already met, get to know a little bit more about Josh Law, co-founder of The Only Co. Josh, thanks for joining us today. Great to be here. Thanks for asking me. So you're not only part of The Only Co., uh, but a variety of other things that we're going to get a chance to talk about before we do that. Um, so folks get a chance to know just a little bit about you as a person. Could you tell us a little bit about your background? Yeah, sure. So I uh, I grew up here in Sheridan, Wyoming, and um, really got engaged in skiing. And um, a group of friends of mine, uh, we just, we started skiing and we, um, we knew that we wanted to make something bigger from it. And so we started making ski movies. And so much like, you know, kind of a low budget local Warren Miller style, we made three movies and it was a ton of fun. Um, and that kind of got me used to and engaged in making something with friends and then taking kind of a passion and making commerce out of it, if you will, uh, and just funding kind of the lifestyle I wanted. And so grew up here in Sheridan, uh, married um, for 11 years to Danielle. Um, we have three kids. Uh, it keeps us really busy. Our third one came last April. So life has changed a lot since then. And uh, yeah, it's been been really cool. Uh, my background, uh, I went to the University of Wyoming and have an ag economics degree. Uh, my dad was in seed technology, um, you know, for forever until just recently. But uh, so I kind of went that ag route because I didn't have a better, uh, I guess, option at, at, at my disposal at the time. And then I started the company before I graduated college. So that's a little bit about my background. Moved back to Sheridan from Laramie about 10 years ago. And you are one of the very few people I've ever met who has literally taken a sabbatical. Are you just wrapped up on the sabbatical or are you about to wrap up? Where are you in that process? Yeah, so I thought I'd kind of on-ramp back in, you know, just, just steady and just kind of slow. And it's basically done this, uh, which is okay. I think that's part of just my personality, but... Uh, but yeah, no, it's, uh, it's done. Uh, we're back on and it, it was about seven weeks or so, um, you know, going 11 years, I hadn't really taken a break and our first two kids, I didn't really take a break after they were born. And so with the third one, I said, I need to do that before they reach toddler age. So he's six months, five, six months. So it's been, it's been really, really, it was really, really good. Um, and I'm glad to be back though. Uh, all rested and recharged. One of the things that you and I talked about, I actually, I was lucky enough uh, for us to have coffee and uh, during your sabbatical. And then we went and we, we toured a, a retail location that you guys have set up that also has a, a repair shop attached to it. And the brand that we got to see folks see on the screen now, um, could you tell us a little bit about what this brand is and maybe how it got started? Yeah. So um, going back to kind of the high school component, I, I didn't, I, I wanted to be around cool people and work on cool things. So I came up with this life mantra that was just cool people, cool projects. And the people side came first because it really mattered um, who, I, who I worked with, who I, I spent time with. Um, but I also didn't want to be exclusive in that. I wanted to invite other people into that culture. And so when I picked my partner um, to, to found our company, um, I wanted to find someone that matched my values and so forth. And so within that, that motto of cool people, cool projects, uh, a component of that was, I don't really care what I'm working on as long as I'm with people that I respect and trust and, and you know, they, they feel the same way. And I've now defined cool as people who want to win, who want the people around them to win and who want their customers or the other stakeholders to win. So it's kind of a win, win, win. Other ways I've heard it called, uh, Shep Gordon called it compassion business. And uh, that resonates with me. So Go Fast, Don't Die is basically an outpouring of a project um, that my partner felt sort of passionate about related to changing the culture or even contributing to the culture of the motorcycle industry, the moto space. So um, started in 20, we had a logo in like 2015, kind of a website 2016, and then more of a launch in 2017. So it's, yeah, it's, get, it's getting more serious, I guess. And there's just a very small sampling of the different slogans and different ways you express those slogans in different products. There's clothing, there's all kinds of swag, different things that are really cool. Uh, one that jumped out at, at me um, 
was the in the bottom corner, folks will see one that says, no one gets out alive, live accordingly. Um, and I, I was really stricken by it. And we talked about it when we were in the shop, the idea that there is this sense that people, uh, safety is obviously a good thing, but maybe people err too much on the side of safety. Could you, you speak a little bit about how that kind of plays into the brand? Yeah. So we talk about the fact that our only actual resource is time and you can never get it back. And so um, it's kind of this, this concept that regret is, is the only debt that you can never pay off as well. Um, and so go fast, don't die is challenging us to think about the time that we have left and what are we going to do with it? And what are the things that matter to us? You'll see in the top right corner there, clocks tick and start living. And you have at the top, it says life, you know, if you can, you know, you can check it out on your own time, but it says life and that life is going down. And in our, for our, for us, it's about, you know, life on the road and, and, you know, spending the time that way. That's the medium at which we've kind of chosen to, to do our thing. But for, it, it's supposed to be for anyone, you know, what are the things that are going to give you life? What are the things that matter to you? And if you're not happy, then risk happy, you know, uh, go step out of your comfort zone, get to a place where you can, you can be happy. And uh, that's a lot about what go fast is about. Um, you know, we've talked a little bit about the fact that these messages let go for dear life clocks tick and start living, you know, risk happy more miles, more smiles. We're, we're trying to just contribute through our message and through our, our life um, in a way that causes other people to want to contribute as well. So our, our core purpose is to create a culture of contribution. And um, that's what we're about. And so we're not your typical moto brand. We've even been told that we're like the live, laugh, love of motorcycles. And uh, my partner, Brett said, I don't know how I feel about that. That's kind of I don't like it, you know, but then over time, he's like, maybe it's okay. And so we created that design and posted it, you know, to just embrace, like, it doesn't matter. Like, we're not too cool. Like we're about being inclusive and, and whatever, you know, we just kind of poke fun at, at ourselves. We're like ridiculously ridiculous and ridiculously serious the next time, you know? So we, we don't take ourselves too seriously, but we take ourselves very seriously all at the same time. It's this weird, weird thing. So I guess that kind of summarizes a little bit. I can go deeper if you want to steer me a, a little bit more related to go fast. I'm happy to. Well, the thing that, that struck me about it to go back to this idea that it it's bigger than the idea of just people who ride or just people who own motorcycles and this idea of the, the journey itself. And, and I know that kind of flows through a lot of the work that you do and the projects you're involved in and even things you do in the community. Um, is that something that's front and foremost for you as you think through projects or does it just come as a byproduct? Yeah, I think it's a reminder that I need to, I need to have in my life. Um, in, impatience is, is easy for me. Um, I had a, a kind of a personality coach, life coach once tell me that mold won't grow under me. And I think about that frequently. And, you know, it's a funny visual. I just won't stay still long enough to create a shadow that would create the, the environment for something to grow like that. So I'm like, wow, I'm just moving and I, I can feel it. Um, but I also know that that energy can be detrimental to stability at times. When I came back from sabbatical, my COO said, you know, we kind of missed, we, we missed the change agent. We think, you know, you really bring the change agent, the, you know, disruption to the status quo. And um, we want that back, you know, but I've also heard it said, I guess, that um, your greatest weakness is your greatest strength overdone or overplayed or overused. And so I do have to find ways to enjoy the process because I can get impatient for not necessarily the goal, but just progress. I, I just, I'm impatient to move, you know? And um, yeah, I think you have to, in business, uh, I've found that it just takes time. It takes way more time than is comfortable for, for a guy like me. And for, I think a lot of entrepreneurs that have seen some success, they just want to move. And um, yeah. And another project you were involved in, uh, this one, uh, not trying to force a segue, but uh, as we toured Luminous, um, there's time built into that business because you can't rush certain parts of that process. So it, it is an interesting overlay between what you were just saying and what we're talking about now. Luminous was an existing business that you then became a part of it. What was it about that business or the people in that business that really drew you to it. 
Yeah. Um, so I saw these, th these are the original founders, um, Seth and Cooley, um, Seth or Cooley Butler um, from foreground to background. And um, we saw, so they founded, I believe in 2013, and we've been a company doing branding and different work like that since prior to then. So we saw what they were doing and, and the product was so good, but the message and the, the brand just didn't align. We really felt like it held it back. So I talked to him like, I think you need a new logo. Well, for anyone that's owned a business, that's not really what you want to hear, you know, and that's kind of a delicate conversation at times. Um, it's your, your logo is like your face. It's, it's kind of like saying, I think you need a new face, you know, and especially if it's been around a while or it was your founding face, you know, it's, there's a lot of emotion there. So anyway, I saw these guys making a great product and I just felt like they needed some help. And the only co core purpose is to unlock human potential. And so I saw this as an opportunity to partner with a couple of guys that were doing really great work that just need some help. And so I told them, let me know if you need some help. You know, I, I don't know what this could look like. And it wasn't for a few years um, that it all kind of came together. So my dad and, and, and me joined um, these, these two. And then not too long after Seth decided it was time to move on and he moved up to Missoula and he's a brewer up in Missoula and actually just won a couple of awards with, a, I think a sour and, and an, I can't remember what the other one was, but he's, he's doing great up there. Um, so that was kind of the, the impetus. It was, we just want to, I want to help. I want to maximize the potential that I saw in the product. And I knew that my skill set and our team skill set and, and my dad could, could help get it to the next level. And then my sister got involved for a couple of years. She's now at, at only co. And now my brother is the brew or is the, um, the manager at the brew house now. So he's kind of unlocking his potential related to just trying something new. He worked for me for seven years at the agency. So yeah, that's, I could go on and on probably if you have more questions about the brewery, but you are right. It does take a certain level of patience. You know, the, the yeast only, only uh, um, for lack of a better term, eat and fart so fast. Uh, so, well, and touring the facility, if, if anyone who's watching this or listening to it hasn't actually been in the building uh, in putting this image together, we tried to find one that, that represented a little bit about the feel of it. But as everyone knows, it's so tough to capture that in photography. And the building itself has so many stories and so much character that goes along with it. Um, what was it like for you being in a, a business where there's not only a physical product, which you've done in other places, but now you've got a physical building where it lives as well. Was that dramatically different or was it just another aspect of the same stuff? Um, it definitely changes in terms of the way you think about the product and product. A lot of times you can think of as, you know, like a, like a can, um, you know, like a product, but you can actually think about product in a few different ways. You have an actual product, a thing, a physical good, um, or the service even. Um, but you also have like augmented product, which would be like service after the sale, you know, warranty or, or other things. And then you have um, like the core product is one way you can think about it. And that's kind of brand. It's a little different. But for us, we've, we've sort of positioned it as um, like our product is not the beer, like you can find great beer all over the place. I have, I have tried probably thousands of beers at this point. And there's very few that I'm like, this is bad. Most of the time, I'm like, this is pretty good beer, you know? Um, so we never wanted to be the best beer producer. You know, we, we need good beer. We want good beer, but we wanted to be a place where the community could find community. So uh, my sister coined it to begin with, and it was Sheridan's living room. And so when you come to our space, like the hope is that you feel very comfortable. It's warm, inviting, um, and that um, you can you can have discussions or debate and feel very comfortable. And um, it can be you know the living room away from your living room. Um, and it that even that principle has helped guide some of the decisions around what we put in there and what we don't. If you wouldn't put it in your living room, then we're probably not going to put it in the brewery. You know that's been one concept that's really helped us think through that. So what we provide, what we try to provide is a community where people are known. Um, you know, I think the way my sister had coined it was you're not a nobody, you're somebody when you're at Luminous, you know, and I I've always loved that. And, um, yeah, she should get all the credit in the world for that. So well, cool. and for folks who might be passing through again, great environment. You're right, Josh, it is very good beer, but the environment itself is a really cool thing to check out as well. I, 
I'm going to use this as a transition. Speaking of environment, uh, there are a couple of different snapshots folks will see on the screen that have to do with uh, the kind of uh, environment or the kind of culture that you've created as a part of, of OnlyCo. And these are just two examples, but they were ones that, that kind of struck me as I was looking through some of your stuff. And one of them is an award that you give, uh, and that's what folks will see in the bottom right corner. Uh, and yes, that is an action figure that's related to the award. Uh, if you could tell us what the award is and kind of what the idea is behind it. So yeah, so kind of transitioning, carrying over from, from impact that my sister has had on, on the businesses I'm a part of. Um, she came up with this concept of the John Cena Award or the Crushed It Award. And so the idea is um, every two weeks at the time, now we do it every, every four weeks basically, but we have what's called an organization uh, like retro, like look back. It's basically a staff meeting. But in that we, we have this award and it's the, the John Cena doll. And it's awarded to someone from someone that's won it the last time, but to someone who's just crushed it, done a great job, really got, got stuff done, made an impact. And so people prepare a little saying or, or, or not a saying, a kind of like a paragraph of what they want to say about why they're giving the award to this person. We make sure that gets written down. We usually try to record it so we can post that on our social. The doll, John Cena doll that you can push the belly or something and it makes John Cena noises. But uh, yeah, it's just ridiculous. But it goes with that person. So they take it with them. So we, uh, Christine here won it this last time. I believe from Dan, our chief creative officer, Christine's our director of product at GoFast. Um, and she's been on board about three months um, and she's a crusher for sure. So it's, it's rightly awarded. And uh, so we had to send it because she works remote. She works down in Austin, Texas. Uh, so we sent the John Cena and we sent a book, a John Cena book that goes along with it that she has to read and, and prior, then, then she'll give the award again next. So yeah, that's, that's the lowdown on there. And again, Catherine uh, deserves all the credit on that. Now, because we know John Cena is undoubtedly struggling financially, it's worth saying something about the book in case people wanted to go out and grab that because I had never heard there was a John Cena book and, and you, you read voraciously, not only books, but all kinds of information. Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. I seem to remember you saying the John Cena book was actually pretty worthwhile. Oh, it's great. It's, um, it's interesting too. I'm just looking up the, the name of the book real quick so I can uh, say it. Um, but what it is, it's just, a, it's like his quotes, his quotes on life and they're little small pieces and they're, they're pretty inspirational. And you kind of forget that these guys are, you know, um, like these wrestlers are, are kind of theatrical and they're, they're storytellers and they're brand builders. And you don't think that way, but you look at a guy like, um, what is it? The, the rock, right. Who's now transitioned to movies quite well. Like he's, phenomenally talented and a very hard worker and you can you can kind of look at john cena and think whatever you want about him but his stuff is great and i don't know if you'll be able to see it but that's the book um so be a work in progress and you you can read in about 20 minutes it just quotes and quotes and you can take photos of them make them their background of your your phone um but yeah it's, it's a, actually a great book see a nugget people might pick up and then the other piece that we put on the screen here um, is another fun, but also culture building thing you do. Um, and then you post about it as well. This idea of two truths and a lie, which I think we're all kind of vaguely familiar with that kind of concept. What was it about this one that you, you thought would be good? And, and what is it you enjoy about it in, in reality, as opposed to what you thought it might've been? Yeah, sure. So both of these concepts were birthed out of using um, a system that we, we do with our clients um, and it's called branded programming. And so the whole concept, um, and I think we've, we've coined it as only programming, but the concept is to come up with things that line up with business objectives to some degree and um, can be trial, trial and aired a little bit and see if they work. And then based on the things that work, you can make larger production efforts. So a lot of times people get it, get it wrong. They try to make a Super Bowl ad and spend a ton of resource and energy, but they don't actually know if it'll hit or not, where if you can test little messages down low and then use that to form a strategy to make a big production you have a higher likelihood of it hitting so you know with this um two truths and a lie came out off of the objective to just get more people in our network to know who works here what their passions are and some of the the culture behind um you know the people i guess and uh so yeah both of these kind of came came from that that position but yeah two truths and a lie so you know you say uh 
we, we create a carousel on social and you can swipe through them and read each one. And then you have to guess which one is the lie and you scroll one more over and then you, you can, you find out. So I think we've gone through probably three quarters of the people if I had to guess half the people maybe, and it's been real cool. I just love how much fun you seem to have. And it, it does tie into another thing that I wanted to ask you about, which is um, there's a fun aspect to what you do and folks can see it in both images here. Uh, you could put a quote up, at, but you don't necessarily have to have fun with it like you guys did here. Um, you could try to communicate an idea, but you don't necessarily have to try to have fun with it. It seems like you and your team go out of your way to not only try to communicate valuable information, but also to try to have fun. Am I reading that correctly? Or is it just something that's happening by accident just because you're creative people? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, we want to make people think and pause and, you know, because our product is delivered from an agency standpoint to such few amount of people like we don't have thousands of clients and we're not a productized firm we're a customized firm so the the level of involvement we have with clients um varies in what we do and so this is a way that we can kind of communicate more broadly like some concepts that we're thinking about the one on the left you know is really a, a pretty powerful tool that i i think a lot of people are sort of familiar with but we have this belief here that you should be, you should pick one of those, you know, quality, speed, or price, and be really well known for that. So quality, you know, like top-notch quality, you might be kind of fast, but you're not going to be, you're going to intentionally, our, our coach, our, our business coach, he, he taught us to, to think about it. Which one are you going to intentionally be bad at? Because if you try to be good at all of them, you're, you're not really, go, you, that's why it's impossible. Like you just can't be good at amazing quality, amazingly fast and cheap. It's just, it's just impossible. So, and I, I love not only this type of content, but for anyone who uh, follows you guys on Facebook, or if someone follows you on LinkedIn, uh, it seems as though you're just regularly uh, chewing information, just, just kind of always digesting this kind of stuff. Is that something that you mainly drive or is it something that everybody on your team contributes on? Where, where does that, where does that machine live? Yeah. See, it's funny you bring that up. So we had a goal for this year to really level up our, our own marketing. And um, so the team all gets an opportunity to write blog content. Um, so we have different blogs and different team members write it and it gets, you know, edited and proofed and everything from, from various team members. But um the branded programming and diagram of the day, a lot of this is led like from an only code perspective by Catherine. So she's pushing this consistency, um, you know, seeing what's working and, and, and changing. Um, you also have Dan, our, our chief creative officer. Uh, the minute I start naming people, I leave someone out and it's bad, but there's a lot of people involved, but Catherine does keep this on the rails related to just consistency and, and trying to measure like, is this working or not? And measuring the effectiveness of these types of campaigns related to lead generation is tough. And that's the type of message sometimes we have to tell our clients because I mean, to some degree, you and I have met and talked and you, and, and then you looked at our brand and, and the things that we do and said, man, we should talk. And so I don't know, maybe someone's going to see this interview and say, ah, I should call those guys. We might be able to help. But how did that relate back to this weird, you know, marketing initiative that we kicked off that we weren't sure if it was worth it or not, you know, marketing is just one of those things that everyone wants it to be direct ROI driven. And um, here I am on like a massive tangent. I'm sorry. Uh, I'm realizing like the question you asked is nothing to do with what I'm Actually, talking about. Actually, you didn't go on a tangent at all. It all loops back because okay. this idea <laughs> that, that we do things like you and I meeting as an example. Um, we actually met at a manufacturing conference of all mm. strange things. Yep. And this connection of you had read a book that I had also read and talked after your presentation about the fact that I didn't know if anyone else had even read that book. It was just dumb luck that you happened to mention it and I liked it. And so this idea of connections and, and for anyone who is having that instinct that you talk about, which is, hey, maybe, maybe these people might think the way that I would want to think. Uh, I would just encourage people to get in touch with Josh or with the company because uh, the other nice thing that I would say is you you have a very Wyoming vibe to you in the sense that uh, you think advertising agency, you think Mad Men, or you think you know Los Angeles. You don't tend to think Wyoming. 
Um, but you guys have a very Wyoming feel uh, from a character point of view. Um, mm. And so I couldn't recommend you, you strongly enough as far as that goes, which actually does bridge me into uh, if folks wanted to get in touch with you. So you actually teed us up perfectly, Josh. Well done. Um, if uh, folks wanted to get in touch with you, you guys are, you have a good presence on Facebook. You have a good presence on LinkedIn. Obviously folks can Google you as well. Um, so there are a lot of ways folks can get in touch with you. Um, and I would say, and I'll open it up as one last question for you, this idea that it's not this idea of, hey, I'm thinking about buying from you or I wanna use your services, but um, you strike me as the kind of people that if someone has an idea that they're kicking around or they have a problem they're trying to figure out how to solve, you guys are always open to talking with people about that. Am I off track on that or is, is that a, a decent thing to say? Yeah, that's awesome. So our three HAG, which is our three-year highly achievable goal, we set out back in January was that we wanted people to, we wanted to be known um, for when people said, hey, I have an idea that we want people to say, hey, you should go talk to OnlyCo. That was one of the measuring factors. And so we've been tracking whenever that happens, you know, when someone reaches out and says, hey, what about this? It doesn't necessarily mean we, we work on it or that you know, it makes sense or, or whatever, but we love the conversation. And we think that if we can help people think through their ideas, um, you know, that, that much better. So I don't know. It's, yeah, it's, it's, it's good stuff. We, we love um, talking business. Man. Last question that I have for you, Josh, actually kind of ties into that as well, because again, when people think advertising agency, they don't tend to think of Wyoming. Um, if you were to start a marketing business or a business consultancy or a marketing firm, you could have started it anywhere. Uh, you could have started it in Wyoming and then gone to a bigger market and theoretically made more money, had more clients. Uh, something's keeping you in Wyoming. You choose to focus and, and to live in Wyoming. W what is it that keeps you here? Yeah, so I've, I've said this a few times to, to people over the years, and I don't know whether it hits or not, but I'll keep saying it till it does, is I like the smell of this place. You know, when you you're in Wyoming and you're in these communities and you just, you know, it's like, feels right. And so, and, and the people that I've done business with in Wyoming, like, I don't have to, I really don't worry about whether they're going to pay us or not. And the minute I get outside the state, I'm like, are they going to pay us? Or are they going to stiff us? You know? And so that's a cool thing. And a lot of it's because there's accountability built into the size of our state. Um, that's a cool thing. You know, when I think about the smell of the state, um, there's integrity, you know, I don't know if integrity has a smell, but let's say it does. So like, I love that. I love the open spaces. I love, um, you know, people talk about it being the slow life and that the city's the fast life. Well, I don't know about you, but I don't stand in lines. I don't stand in traffic. I can go get, you know, spark plugs, uh, groceries, Starbucks, and, um, uh, I don't know, fill up with gas and be back under, uh, 30 minutes, you know, like I'm not standing in traffic now. If I want to go to Casper, it's going to take me a minute. I'm going to have to drive that road. But, um, you know, it's, it's I'll listen to a podcast. I'll, I'll, I'll chill out. I'll, you know, I'll get windshield time. I'll invite a friend to come with me and we'll, we'll talk and, and whatnot. So it's just a, it's just a great place um, to grow up. It's, it's a great community that I've found. And, you know, my, my family lives here and um, I love inviting people to come visit. I'm really proud of all the communities in Wyoming. And um, yeah, it's really cool. Well, I appreciate the fact that you do it here instead of doing it someplace else. And I appreciate the fact that you did this today. Thanks for carving out the time for us. Absolutely. Appreciate it. I do have to ask, what book was it? Do you remember? I, I'm, I, I could not figure it out as you were saying it. Do you remember? We, you had made a reference to a Seth Godin book. Uh, I think it might've been Purple Cow that you had referenced. Okay. Yeah. Cool. Cool. Nice. Yeah. Yep. which is always a winner. One of our other interviews talked about it being one of her favorite books. So we're in a small club. This is great. This is awesome. <laughs>